welcome back to our channel go for agriculture so let's start with the lecture 2 historical perspective of ipm so what is the study of ipm so basically there are two landmarks one is the era of traditional approaches and second is the era of insecticides so first we'll see the traditional approaches so in the ancient times the chinese used to use chalk and potash to control the pest and ants were also used as biological control agents to save the stored grains and in India, neem leaves were placed in grain beans to keep away the pest. Whereas in 380, there was a record of first use of ants as biological control agents against caterpillars and borers in citrus orchards in China. Whereas in 980, the Chinese used arsenic to control the garden pest. The Agricultural Revolution So from 1750 to 1880, so basically this period in Europe is called as Agricultural Revolution. Because at that time, weather was the main factor that caused a large-scale crop disaster. So like for example, late blood of potato, dowdy malady of grapes. So even these two were also caused due to the imbalance in the weather, so that increased the rate of the pest infestation. So due to this crop disaster, the people in Europe, they started showing interest in developing some pest control techniques. So finally, a man named Milladet in 1885, he developed Borodox mixture. So basically this mixture is a combination of copper sulfate and the hydrated lime. Okay. And next in 1850s, natural insecticides like rutinone and pyrethrum were developed. So for name, they are the insecticides, but the sources they have been extracted from are the natural ones, that is the plant parts. And in 1890s, the arthropods were proven to be the carriers of different disease causing organisms. Next. So what are the findings in the era of the traditional approach? First is the ants as biological control. Second, natural insecticides were developed like rotinone and pyrethrum. And third, arthropods were proven to be the vectors. And next is the agricultural revolution. We know about that. Next is the era of insecticides. So during the early 20th century, the demand for the pesticides has increased. So what happened is the people, they started developing the better application equipments. So like for example, yes. In, in this picture, you can see a horse and a cart is used for pesticide application. And here you can see a wheel is used. Whereas here you can see a man is storing his pesticide in a tank so that he sprays his pesticide on the crop directly, like a folio spray. So these are the up better application equipments. Next is modern insecticidal era, DDT. So what is DDT? DDT is dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. So DDT was discovered in 1939 by Swiss chemist Paul Hermann Müller. So from 1939 onwards, they started using this DDT against all kinds of pests. So the surprising thing was it worked wonderfully. So that's why they've referred DDT as wonder insecticide. But in 1946, the house fly it started showing resistance against this DDT. So apart from this, in 1948. Muller, he got the Nobel Prize for the discovery of DDT. And DDT was finally banned in 1972 by USA. So there are two issues because of DDT. One is the pest resistance and second is the pest resurgence. So next. So what is pest resistance and what is pest resurgence? So first we will see the pest resistance. So in this plot or a box, you can see two kinds of insects. One is the triangle and another is the dot. So triangle is basically the non-resistant insects, whereas dot are the inherited resistant ones. So what are inherited resistant insects? So they are the insects which have the capacity to fight the pesticide, that is the resistance is itself in their genes. Okay. So next here you can see for this plot we have done our first spray. So what happens is of course the inherited resistant will survive. And they will be some of the lucky survivors of our non-resistant ones. So these non-resistant lucky survivors are represented by circle. Okay. So these survivors, of course, they reproduce. And next what happens? Offsprings are produced. Okay. So, so here you can see since there is only one inherited resistant uh, insect. So there will be less number of inherited resistant offsprings. And, and there will be more number of non-resistant offsprings so again to this plot we have done our second spray right so what happens of course there will be the survivors of the non-resistant insects and 
all the inherited resistance will survive right so again they will produce and again they produce the offspring so yes so here you can see there are five inherited resistant insects and only three are non resistant ones so what happens if they produce the offspring at five and three okay so since there are five inherited resistant insects the more number will be the or, or, or the more number of offsprings will be the inherited resistant ones and the less number will be the non resistant ones so again we have done a third step on this plot and this time also for sure all the inherited resistant will survive and of course they will be a lucky survivors so what is the moral of the story is so in this first box you can see there is only one inherited resistant insect but in the last one here in this one so how many are there many so this means for each and every spray the the pest it started gaining the resistance like since there is only one in the first box but in the last one there are many it means the insects are gaining the resistance to the inheritance like from parent to offspring again that to his or her offspring so this is called as pest resistance next is pest resurgence so here you can see a plot there are two kinds of insects one is the circle and there is a triangle so basically circle is the pest and triangle is the natural enemy so this plot is before the pesticide spray okay so so here you can see there are 40% of the natural enemies and remaining are the pest so this means these 40% of the natural enemies are enough to control the pest but we have done our pesticide spray so in the second box so what happens since there are no inherited resistant pest all kinds of pest will be dead because pest, because pesticide doesn't know what is a good one or what is a bad one it kills everything which come its, its way right so that's where there are only two natural enemies left and remaining are the pests we can say they are our lucky survivors so again they reproduce and they produce their offspring so what happened in this third box we can see there are only six natural enemies and the remaining are pests so what happened okay so let me ask you a question what is the difference between the second box and third box it is the number right the number has increased so this increase in number or the grow, growth ability of the pest is called as pest resurgence and the main thing is in this third box is these six natural enemies can't control the these many number of pest there should be at least a 50 50 balance between the natural enemies and the pest but but here you can see like 80% are the pest and, and only 20% are the natural enemies so these natural enemies they can't control the pest so this is pest resistance and pest resurgence next so if we come back to our history so in 1959 the entomologists from university of california vernon and their co-workers have published a seminal paper entitled the integration of chemical and biological control of spotted alpha alpha fa okay so in later in 1966 they shortened this term to pest management so later in 1972 the council of environment quality it accepted the term ipm so finally the term ipm was accepted in 1972 so next so what are the findings on the era of insecticides are application equipments in 20th century ddt sorry ddt and the pest resistance and resurgence and finally ipm term was accepted next so what is ipm ipm is the integration pest and management so integration is the combining the different methods pest it can be any organism that is detrimental to the humans if you have any doubt on the pest like what is pest you can go back to my previous lecture next is management so management is set of rules which are based on ecological principles economic and social considerations so we can see management as the control techniques for the effective pest management okay so this is it guys in today's lecture we have discussed about the historical perspective of ipm and thank you for watching if you have any queries you can ask us on our instagram page or you can post on the comment section and also you can download this ppt from the link given below so till then stay tuned take care bye bye